We've got the two units side by side. Now the most noticeable difference is this one, it's the older one. It's really, really heavy and it's huge compared to this and that's the um, box as you can see. So just the dimensions of the, in, even in the cardboard box, is smaller than the old unit itself. So um, massive weight saving on the new one. It's supposed to also run a lot cooler, which is great. Um, and now Victron are popping them in this what looks like recycled reusable forestry packaging which is a bonus um, so looking inside the box the new one so this is the Orion XS and these ones are actually a little bit more user friendly and configurable than the old ones were um, because you can change the output on the power of these but if we look inside here, um, one, the other thing to notice on these is that the remote actually comes included um, and it's already pre-installed in the unit itself. Um, on the old one, that was always in a separate pack. Um, but this is insanely thin and small compared to the old one. Um, you, you can't even compare like that. One. This weighs a couple of hundred grams, if that. Um, the thing I do like about these new ones is the... Um, connectors here at the bottom. Now there's a faceplate with some positive drive screws in there and this black section here comes off and then it allows us to get some really good solid connections um, inside. The thing I didn't like about the old one is if we compare the two there's no protection between these um, connections and what you'll see on this style of the older charger if you still order it is a big sticker here saying that it voids the warranty if there's any short circuits and I think there's a reason for that in that Victron hadn't in the previous models been very clever about separation obviously you've got positive in positive out on either side and then you had a ground directly in the middle so if you were to connect um, if you were to short that anyway you could quite easily damage this unit so you had to make sure you're wiring it up um, when none of the terminals were live get them in nice and secure and then leave them there whereas this one has done they've done a really nice job of separating all three terminals so when we put those live neutral and other live in we know that none of those um, those cables are going to uh, stray and go into another section so that's it so let's go and install this one after this one's obviously just been pulled out um, and then I'll show you setting up the app. Inside this leaflet you've got um, two stickers which you can stick anywhere you like um, to remind you what the Bluetooth pin is. If you ever forget that you can use the puck number which is also listed on the side of the unit but depending on where you mount it it might be easier to use a sticker rather than trying to get your head down the side of some tight space that you fit the unit into. Before we head down to the van, I just want to raise a point on this section. So, Victron have very kindly used nice stainless screws in here. However, they're not a standard PZ or PH. Um, they're a very shallow um, stainless steel screw. So, I've have I've installed a few of these now, and um, I've been lucky before. I always knew they were a bit soft, but this one actually has started rounding out very very easily so when you do it make sure you've got a screwdriver that fits really really well um, and apply quite a lot of pressure to release it because once they start rounding out um, they'll just continue and it's very hard to get them out and without getting that cover off you can't access the in ground and out but as i said earlier this is a, a better setup in that there's actually a bit of a guide here for the cable which separates it and there's a much bigger gap between the sections so it would um, prevent overlap of um, cable between the ground and the uh, positive. If you're swapping across to the Orion, Victron Orion XS from the older TR model then you will notice that the terminals are much shallower in this one which means you will need to cut down some of that exposed copper um, conductor. I'm using some very very sharp cable cutters which are insulated and it's very important to use insulated tools around the battery terminals because if you were to short them out on a seat base then you could quite easily blow some fuses um, or cause some damage to various electrical components within the um, camper side of the installation or even the manufacturer side. So I've just inserted all three in with the um, copper conductors sh uh, shortened down here and then I'm going to mount it on the wall. Now this is the part where I'm putting the plastic cover on and again please be careful here they are stainless steel and if you tighten them up too much that, set, that, um, that head will strip out and you'll have difficulty releasing the terminals in future.
going to do is open the Victron Connect app. We should, down the bottom there, which isn't part of my devices, see the Victron Orion XS. Now what that's going to do is ask for the password we had earlier. So I'm just going to select and cut that. Paste that in there. And there we have, it needs an update. Now always make sure you update them when you install them. You can't, fortunately you can't move any further on the Victron stuff until you do. Um, but that's gonna update. And as you can see there, we've got firmware updated to version 1.06. Continue on, and if we head in, we're gonna configure this. So once it's in, we can see that the charge is off. I'm gonna enable this. Um, and the reason is, on your main picture on screen, it gives you some quick readouts. So I really like that feature. We can see that the battery, or the input, sorry, is um, at 12.1. The leisure side is at 13.6 at the moment. And there is zero current either way. So what we want to do is just check that this is set up as a charger, not a power supply. On the old ones, they often set it up as a... Um, as a power supply you want to make sure that that's on charger in settings and then if we put the input current down to we want 40 amps um, and we want the output current as well to be 40 amps now um, you want to make sure that your cable is correctly sized if you've done what I've done and you might have removed an older charger which was like an 18 amp um orion then you want to make sure that you've got the correct size cable now for up to 50 amps you'd be you'd be absolutely fine with 16 millimeter cable provided that your cable run is a suitable length um, i'm going to stick a, a link to that in the um in the description below so that you can do a calculator on voltage drop um, and then if we just look in here we've got um, battery settings so we want to put select presets so for me, it's a lithium battery. So we're going to chuck that on smart lithium. That just says low temperature cutoff. Um, it's got the battery um, battery temperature, um, and then it automatically chucks in our um, settings in terms of float voltage, absorption, um, bulk, and stuff like that. So um, we can go back. Um, engine shutdown detection is on smart alternator type so you could put that you've got a regular alternator if you're using this with a newer vehicle sorry an older vehicle then you could use a regular alternator on this newer vehicle with mine's a euro 5 it's got a smart alternator on it um so this these are the predefined alternator settings so the start voltage is going to be at 14 uh, 14 volts um, and it's going to be delay start of 120 seconds and shut down voltage for the unit is going to be 13.1 volts which means this automatically turns itself on and off and you don't need an ignition in um, on most fans with the Victron product and um, it does it automatically now what I'm going to do is start the engine um, and we're going to see this power up so if we now look at the app hopefully there you go, we can see a bulk charge happening there. So the input is hit 14 volts and it's putting out 40, 40 amps as we can see there. We're putting out 511 watts. It's gonna go into absorption because the battery's been charging on solar all day. Um, and that's done. Just make sure when you're in this app uh, that it's always put on charger if you wanna charge it from the engine. Um, sometimes that's selected to power input um, or power supply sorry and that is the reason why your charger isn't working.